From the Tennessee Valley Interstellar Workshop, this is the Starship Vlog. I'm Les Johnson. As the year 2014 draws to a close, I wanted to review some of the notable events of the year. And starting with the most recent is the Tennessee Valley Interstellar Workshop held in Oak Ridge, Tennessee this year. The annual event brought together a number of speakers, writers, and collaborators for an event created by Les Johnson, noted NASA physicist, manager, and science fiction author who serves as the president of the organization and described its mission like this. To promote science and technology interest and education with the ultimate goal of laying the framework for future generations to go to the stars. The most widely held visions of success come from science fiction, and we know what they look like. They look generally like the Earth. Well, when it comes to finding real-world targets for that kind of thing, there is no one more expert in the world than Sarah Seeger of MIT. My main goal right now is to lead an effort to actually be able to find the true Earth twins. That is, Earth-like planets orbiting nearby Sun-like stars. Are there signs of life, be that bacterial life or more intelligent life? It's important to study exoplanets for so many reasons. One of them is we just want to understand where we came from. How did our Earth form and evolve? And by having many copies of other planetary systems, we can hope to try to understand that problem. This is great stuff. It's a real pleasure to learn from a brilliant, engaging speaker sharing their passion for their work on such an inspiring goal. And yet, even though it sounds crazy, there are people who get emotionally upset by the idea of Earth-like exoplanets. Unsurprisingly, these people tend to have been led astray when they were very young, and as adults, they have cognitive impairment. And this person had, I don't know if he had ever heard of exoplanets before. And he sat down after I told him a bit about it. He said, you know, this is a problem because in my Bible it said that God, um, God created heaven and earth. Not like other earths, just that earth. And I think he was going to, he wasn't going to challenge me, but he was just, he didn't understand what I was trying to say. Invisible friends with magic powers, we normally think it's a problem. Whether it's fairy tales about supernatural beings, politics, astrology, or whatever, confusing these for science has held us back for so long and now holds us back from taking actions needed to mitigate serious risks of global collapse, to say nothing of reaching the stars. We must grow out of our mental infancy together. Dr. Seeger refers to expanding our cognitive horizons in her field like this. We call it the awakening that all around the world now, people are taking exoplanets more and more seriously. Those of us interested in development of faster than light look forward to being able to say what she does. And we went from a field of being a real giggle factor to being so serious now that even, that no one can really, you know, question that planets are out there and that we're on this path to finding another Earth. And Dr. Seeger brilliantly shares what we can look forward to. Someday, um, it'll be just common knowledge that yes, there are signs of life. There is life beyond our planetary system. But in the future, we want to be able to take our children and to point to a sun-like star and to tell them that star has a planet like Earth. Thanks for your attention. That day is coming, and when it does, the kind of motivation it takes to develop faster than light capability will increase as people recognize the need to go, to see what's there on these exoplanets, and return home within durations reasonably appropriate for the human lifespan. If you're getting ready for that day, I'd like to thank you for watching. You are my kind of person. That's it for this episode. Our Starship Pop Culture this time is a clip from 2014's Guardians of the Galaxy. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.